and welcome to Sundry Sports for Monday, June, 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 Monday, July 6th. We have a full slate of sports newsletters today, starting with NASCAR. Kevin Harvick escapes in overtime, lands third Brickyard victory. In an action-filled afternoon of NASCAR Cup Series racing and Sunday's Big Machine Hand Sanitizer 400, powered by Big Machine Records, Kevin Harvick held off the field in an overtime sprint to the finish line to earn his fourth victory of the season and his second consecutive and third overall win at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Good for him. He and Denny Hamlin were duking it out for a while, but then Denny Hamlin got a little beat up. Uh, that, uh, hand sanitizer 400, that was super obnoxious, by the way. It was like, I guess it was the CEO of Big Machine Records. He's got his mask on, and then he whips out some hand sanitizer, spritzes the mic with it, loosens his mask, and gives us all a little pep talk about keeping everybody safe before saying, gentlemen, start your engines. It was it was obnoxious. Late crash thwarts Denny Hamlin's hopes for first Brickyard win. Yep, there it is. Denny Hamlin had designs on another signature victory Sunday afternoon, adding another something to his something. But, yeah. Sad for him. Harvick. I could have never dreamed of three Brickyard wins. Kevin Harvick talks about realizing his dream not once, but three times by winning at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Justin Allgaier's fill-in drive for Jimmy Johnson ends in early wreck at Brickyard. Poor guy. Justin Allgaier's substitute drive in place of seven-time champion Jimmy Johnson ended sadly. Because Jimmy Johnson has the COVID. That's why he wasn't there. <clears throat> Back half of the field crashes on pit road early at Indy. Watch as the second half of the field stacks up on pit road at Indianapolis, injuring a crewman. He was, uh, what, whatever they call the guy that changes the tire. He was, he, he was the one that was doing the back tires. And he got a little squashed, but he was able to pull himself away from danger. And seems like he'll be fine. Infinity Waterproof Eyeliner, semi-permanent micro-pigment technology, sulfate, toxin, and cruelty-free, ultra-long-lasting, and 100% vegan. Thrive cos Cosmetics. Oh, my goodness. Try Thrive. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. NASCAR on TV schedule, week of July 6th through 12th, 2020. Which channels have NASCAR programming this week? We answer that and give the weekly blah, blah, blah. It appears to be Fox and MB NBC. That's uh, what your little picture says right there. 2020 stage points for the NASCAR Cup Series. Every 2020 race except the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway is comprised of something. I don't really care. Weekend schedule for Kentucky Speedway. Don't miss any of the action this weekend from Kentucky. Kentucky Speedway. Very good. Moving along to Cowboys Wire, brought to you by USA Today. And it's the same one that was the top story yesterday and the day before. Gallimore's first step to QB is first step to Cowboys immortality. He's literally the first guy to take advantage of an opening, so don't be surprised if rookie Neville Gallimore squeezes through a crowded group to emerge with some stellar highlights in 2020. Our player profile countdown to the regular season resumes. Ah, Cowboys news. McCarthy faces several challenges. Looney looking to step up again. All right, I don't think I've read that one yet. <coughs> Mike McCarthy is one of the very best coaches in the NFL, but entering his first season with the Cowboys, he faces several challenges with the unusual offseason due to the COVID-19 panic. 
Anthony Brown has been a solid cornerback during his four-year career, but with guys like rookie Trayvon Diggs and Jordan Lewis on the roster, is his worth being overlooked? Joe Looney f filled in for recently retired center Travis Frederick in 2018 and held his own and now finds himself in a similar situation entering this season. The Cowboys further buffered their def defensive front with Neville Gallimore, whose unique skill set has him in position to contribute early. The possibility of no preseason games, tight end David Unjoku not being Unjuko, not Unjoku, Unjuko, David Unjuko not being a fit in Dallas, and four reasons to be excited about the 2020 Dallas Cowboys and more are covered in the news and notes. Looney Tunes. So clever. Earnings starting not again for Cowboys will be music to big man's ears. Looney was a breath of fresh air in 2018 when Frederick, when Frederick missed the season battling Guillain Barr syndrome. Dave Sturcio breaks down how he's in a similar position heading into 2020 as the front runner to take over for the former All Pro. Spirit of 76, the year the Dallas Cowboys wore red, white, and blue. Tony Brock of Cowboys Wire talks about the Cowboy talks about when the Cowboys wore a red, white, blue stripe on their helmet during the country's bicentennial celebration in 1976. <coughs> Hard as steel. Undrafted free agent's journey to Cowboys roster daunting, not impossible. Cowboys Wire's Tony Thompson discusses undrafted offensive tackle Terrence Steele's college background and outlook for making the Cowboys roster. Gallimore's first... Okay, I just read that. Cowboys, Cowboys Wire's... Cowboys Wire's... K.D. Drummond examines the third-round rookie's skill set and competition for playing time this season. Tight end David Njoku... Okay, so it is Njoku. It was a typo before? No, because there it says Njoku. Oh my goodness, which is it? Tight end David Njoku doesn't make sense for the Dallas Cowboys. Inside the Stars, John Williams breaks down a, how a high asking price, inconsistency, and the potential of Blake Jarwin are the reasons why adding David Njoku doesn't make sense for the Cowboys. Yes, Blake Jarwin has definitely got potential. We do need... I thought we needed more depth in the tight end, but I guess a cheaper one would be better. Dallas Cowboys, is this defensive player underrated? The potential of rookie cornerback Trayvon Diggs and Jordan Lewis getting more opportunities are encouraging signs for the secondary. However, with four relatively solid years in the NFL under his belt and inking a three-year deal worth $15.5 million, Anthony Brown is a piece on the back end that might be undervalued. <coughs> Well, if he just got that brand new contract, does that really make him undervalued? Mike McCarthy faces a uniquely long list of challenges to start first season as Cowboys head coach. New head coach Mike McCarthy has been hindered by the current COVID-19 panic in preparation for his first season with the Dallas Cowboys. Limited interaction and an all-but-eliminated offseason program create several obstacles for the former Super Bowl winning coach in 2020. Yeah, this fucking sucks. Undrafted Kendrick Rogers brings size, speed to Cowboys wide receiver competition. The Cowboys are loaded at wide receiver with Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, and CeeDee Lamb, but undrafted wide receiver Kendrick Rogers has the size and speed to challenge Cedric Wilson and Devin Smith for roster spots. It's always good to have lots of wide receiver depth, lots of targets, lots and lots of targets. That's what we want. It is possible that there might not be any preseason games at all this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The current COVID-19 panic has changed all normal procedures taken by the NFL in preparation for a new season, including having two preseason games already canceled. With that being said, it's highly possible there aren't any preseason games at all. Well, I just saw... I think I just saw it was a commercial for a preseason game, Texans versus Chiefs. Maybe it wasn't a preseason game. Maybe it was the opening game. At the time, I was just thinking, hey, preseason game. Hmm. But yeah, stop being cowards, Players Association. You have so little chance of dying from COVID-19. It's not even funny. 
the, the, that's like saying you're not going to play because there might be mosquitoes out on the field. That's, 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 that's sort of basically the same thing. That's like saying you're afraid to play because you might get a few mosquito bites. This is ridiculous. Happy 4th. Happy Independence Day. Four reasons to be excited about the 2020 Dallas Cowboys. From a new era under Mike McCarthy to the addition of CeeDee Lamb, there are several reasons to be excited about the 2020 Dallas Cowboys. There are several reasons. A new era under Mike McCarthy that's getting off to a very sour start. How has he been has he been able to build any sort of rapport with his players? I'm pretty sure that's that's important. <clears throat> Going back. Looney Tunes. Earnings starting not again for Cowboys will be music to big man's ears. Oh haven't read that before. How clever, Looney Tunes. <laughs> Two trading icons unveil the secret on how you could be earning thousands every day. 7 a.m. Super Surges. Subscribe now. Spirit of 76, just read about that too. Cowboys news. Injuries to worry most about. Why Jerry's still quiet? I read that yesterday. Hard as steel. Yes, read that. Watch all the hype about the Cowboys in one bomb show. Player finds. Larger practice squads. Split teams. COVID posing more questions. Just get get some fucking perspective. Look at the numbers. Look at the real numbers. And look at the information about how the death numbers are completely and totally inflated. Do some fucking research. Don't just let everything that you do, don't let your entire fucking career be defined by irrational panic. It's so frustrating. The ESPN Daily. Good morning! I just think it's funny that when Joey Chestnut unceremoniously shovels 75 hot dogs in his mouth, he gets lauded as the goat. Yet when I put three dogs on my plate, I catch side eye. Double standards, am I right? Here's your ESPN Daily. Who won the weekend? Roethlisberger Puppies, Party of Seven. I know it probably feels like I'm being biased against Joey Chestnut by giving the title of Who Won the Weekend to anyone else, but in reality, I think puppies trump profound eating prowess. No, I'm so sick of puppies. In fairness, I think puppies trump just about everything, but I digress. That's because you don't actually have puppies, bitch. Over the weekend, Ben Roethlisberger shared pictures of seven new furry additions to his family. Meanwhile, another Super Bowl-winning QB by the name of Tom Brady was celebrating family of the two-legged variety with a throwback photo to honor his mom's birthday. Oh, and Jaguars offensive lineman Jawan Taylor caught a 400-pound grouper. Catching a fish that weighs more than you qualifies as a win in my book. From Paul Pogba something... To Dwayne Wade, to Juju Smith-Schuster, here's who else did it big over the holiday weekend. Things to care about. How NFL offensive linemen escaped the 5,000-calorie lunch lifestyle. If it seems like we have been spending a lot of time talking about offensive linemen recently, it's because we have. Although I would be glad to regale you with my impassioned stance about how the O-line are the unsung heroes of football who don't get nearly enough love. Unless they're... Uh, part of the Dallas Cowboys O-line. Instead, I will let Emily Kaplan, who interviewed nine retired offensive linemen about the lengths they went to in, they went to in bulking up and their secrets to slimming down after hanging up their cleats, preface her eye-opening findings with her own words. According to Elias Sports Bureau, the average weight of starting offensive linemen in the NFL was 254.3 pounds in 1970. It jumped to 276.9 by 1990, then 309.4 pounds by 2000. Today the number stands at 315, more than 60 pounds heavier than 50 years ago. Juxtapose that with another trend we've seen, the incredibly shrinking offensive lineman post-retirement. Joe Thomas was just the latest example of a guy who shed so much weight in his first year out of the league that he looked unrecognizable. The former Browns tackle says 60 pounds melted off from his 325-pound playing weight within six months of his last snap. Uh, 
It was so dramatic, even TMZ picked up Thomas's transformation, headlining an article, Ex-NFL fat guy looks like a chiseled Greek god. I just had a great laugh, Thomas says. Isn't that the typical lineman life? Eleven years in the NFL and all I'm known as now is ex-NFL fat guy. <laughs> in this article, we wanted to look at all of the factors that go into this phenomenon and the potential long-term health risks associated with it. I learned that for many guys, bulking up to modern offensive lineman playing size is unnatural to begin with. They're overstuffing their faces just to get that big. Just wait until you hear what these guys ate in a typical day. Then they face new challenges when they retire and recommit to a normalized, healthier lifestyle. As Thomas says, you're training yourself to have an eating disorder the way you view food when you're in the NFL, and to try to deprogram that is a real challenge. I was surprised by how many guys were willing to not only talk for this piece, but also speak so candidly. We get into everything, from insecurities about appearance and self-worth, to the struggles shopping for clothing, to the fact that these guys are just plain gassy and bloated for most of their football careers. It's a fun, st fun story filled with colorful quotes, outrageous diet details, and some honest self-reflection. I hope you'll check it out. Emily Kaplan I, Yeah, I don't get why they have to be that big. Personally, I don't like the look of an O-line that's got, you know, saggy guts. Continuing. Can Cam Newton handle the pa Patriot way? Patriot way. Cam Newton and Bill Belichick. From a competitive standpoint, it's a natural fit. From Patriot way standpoint, that remains to be seen. There's always the chance that Newton chafes at Belichick's humorless managerial style, like so many outspoken personalities before him. But there's nothing in Cam's professional history that indicates that he can pl can't play through a few caustic mumbles and disappointed dad glares. Dad glares. Suggesting that Cam can't adapt to Belichick is a lazy narrative, says George Whitfield, a private quarterback coach who has worked with the former MVP. Cam recognizes this as a singular opportunity. I can't imagine Belichick telling him, you have goals, and you have a chip on your shoulder. We have goals, and our shoulders look the same as you, just not as big. They look the same as yours. In reality, the Patriot way can be explained by six Super Bowl rings in four words. Win at all costs. In my humble opinion, that feels like a mentality Newton can get behind. Well, yeah. I mean, he did take a... What was an incentive-heavy contract just to be with the Patriots so that he could continue playing because nobody else was giving him a job. He probably is in that that mindset where he's not going to balk at of some, what, challenges to his vanity. Listen up. The Chess Grandmaster's Extreme Workout. Chess Grandmasters need incredible amounts of brain power and extreme physical endurance to take on their rivals. Major tournaments can run six hours a day, 10 to 12 days in a row. Players might burn up to 6,000 calories and lo lose 2 pounds per day during these grueling matches. Today's chess world champions might train with 2 hours per day of running, swimming, or tennis, plus a strict diet. In a re-air of one of our most popular ESPN Daily Podcast episodes, ESPN Aishwarya Kumar joins host Mina Kimes to break down how top chess players meld mind and body. Cool. <coughs> things to watch. Oh, here we go. Schefter. Change is coming to Washington. Supposedly. Adam Schefter joined SportsCenter to explain why he fully expects the Washington Redskins to have a new team name before the 2020 season begins. Schefter cited the organization's statement that the team is going to have a thorough review of the name and explaining his belief that the rebrand is imminent, saying you don't make that announcement unless you intend to make a change. Now the question that remains is what will the new name be? I'm a big fan of alliteration. Just throwing it out there. Okay. Anyway, the reason that they they were forced to at least make that this statement because not only are their sponsors insisting that they do that they change their name, but officials like mayor. I think the mayor and some other city officials from Washington, D.C. are telling them that they can't play in Washington, D.C. if they don't change their name. This, if the name gets changed, it's not going to be because they 
conceded that, oh, yeah, we were wrong. We should we should not have had this name for our team. No, it's going to be because they were forced. They had because they had no other choice. That doesn't that's not going to mean anything. You'll be celebrating a hollow victory. <laughs> but nobody's going to realize that. And also, one thing I was thinking last night, if if they do lose their backbone and allow themselves to be strong-armed into changing their name, which I mean, in fairness to them, it looks like they won't have any other choice, but I mean, I'm just saying they they will have lost their worthiness to call themselves Redskins anyway. This is just a stupid situation for them. Overheard. Actually, I think our chances are higher to win the 2020 title just because we're all rested and we're all ready to go. Anthony Davis on the Lakers' championship chances. Okay. I guess that's a little... On one hand, that's refreshing because it's better than the quotes that are about, ooh, this is the hardest championship ever because of COVID-19 or blah, blah, blah. It's refreshing in, you know, juxtaposed against that. But on the other hand, I do not like any attempts to make this whole lockdown quarantine bullshit look any better than it is because it's just plain bullshit. Remember when? Put some respect on her name. On this date in 1957, Althea Gibson made history by defeating Darlene Hard to become the first African-American woman to win Wimbledon. Good for her. Is, so that's like a, do they, do they win a silver platter at Wimbledon? I don't know things about Wimbledon. Do they still win that at Wimbledon? That's pretty. I want one. Until next time, remember. Do you remember on June 11th when I said June 11th was a big day for prestigious birthdays? No? Well, I did. As it turns out, July 6th is also one of those days. Zion Williamson, Paul Gassel, Manny Machado, Sylvester Stallone, and 50 Cent are, are all celebrating birthdays today. Great crew. This has been your ESPN Daily from Monday, July 6th, 2020. And that's all for ESPN. Moving on, last but not least... Well, possibly least. Yahoo Sports, read and react. Trending. Packers CEO against COVID. Time is no longer on the NFL's side. No, you let time run away from you. That was all all y'all's doing. You let this happen. By, By succumbing to the hysteria, you let this happen. Golf Hulk a.k.a. Bryson DeChambeau, continues his hot post-quarantine run with a victory. Indians manager supports name change. Ugh. NASCAR pit crew, yeah, well, if, yeah, if the Redskins cave, then Indians won't be able to stop anything. But what about the Chiefs? Are the Chiefs going to get gonna get on the chopping block next? When, is, when does it end? NASCAR pit crew member injured in wild indie accident. Yeah, we talked about that. He got a little squished. But there was no head trauma, and he was able to get himself out of the way of more danger. The lead. Can we tolerate the inevitable? What? By Jay Hart. Morning, and welcome back to Read and React full-time. Coming out of the holiday weekend, we've got the Milwaukee Bucks shutting down their team facility over COVID concerns, NASCAR's Jimmy Johnson on the shelf after testing positive, MLB players both testing positive and backing out of the upcoming season, and the MLS bubble already penetrated. This isn't to paint a doom and gloom picture of the state of sports, but rather to point out the obvious. If sports are going to happen, players are going to get COVID. Exactly. The question then is this. Are players okay with that? Our teams? Our leagues? Educate your fucking players. Show them the real numbers. Show them the real chances. The chances that they have of, of dying are so minuscule. 
given just no the, the chances of anybody dying are 0. 0.00 whatever percent that's a very small very small chance and athletes i think you can you can reduce that even more because healthy people don't generally die from this even if they have it even if they have it bad i don't i don't know if healthy people can get it really bad but they're generally not going to die <sighs> Some players have already shown they aren't choosing not to play. Some players have already shown they are yellow-bellied cowards choosing not to play. Others are going forward, and some of them are going to contract the disease. That's just the reality of a panic. Nothing short of total isolation can keep someone 100% safe, and total isolation is an impossibility in this circumstance. Do we, as a society, have tolerance for players contracting the virus? Yes. What is our tolerance? Is it 10, 20, 30 cases? Is it zero? Because if it's zero, sports are not going to happen. How about everybody, sooner or later, get your antibodies so you won't have to worry about it. Get it out of the way. This isn't meant to be a political discussion or even a scientific one. And yes, I realize everyone has their PhD in epidemiology by now, but a real world one. Uh, real world PhD in epidemiology. Don't credit the general public with, with that sort of thing. Nobody, that's, that's no, no. The risk is not going away completely without a vaccine, and the virus itself, not even then. Sure, we all need to do our part to tamp it down in the ways we can, but let's acknowledge that even doing that is not going to send case numbers to zero. This inevitability will only be highlighted by sports, where every positive test becomes another headline. There will be big names, stars, players whose absences will have impacts on games and maybe even titles. This is the reality. One that if we want sports to come back, we have to accept. Some will, some won't. And some will use the infections as a vehicle to push an agenda. Over the weekend, Green Bay Packers CEO Mark Murphy issued a veiled warning, saying, Time is no longer on our side. He's right. It's not about time anymore. It's now about tolerance. It should have been about tolerance from the start. <sighs> Barons. Why Joe Burrow could be a fantasy star in his first year. Wetzel. Why Dan Schneider is likely to give up on Redskins' name. Ugh. Because he won't have any other choice. Because his team needs a place to play. Brown. Sean Doolittle breaks down the difficult state of MLB camps. What is that hair? Who's hungry? Joey Chestnut pounded down 75 hot dogs in 10 minutes, which is a world record, but would have placed only about fourth at one of our usual Fourth of July picnics. Ah ha ha ha. Hope your holiday was equally fulfilling. Ugh. Okie dokie. Thanks for reading today's issue of Read and React. Follow Yahoo Sports on social. That's it for today. Thank you, and goodbye.